uh, as i already uh, told you guys like uh, during the discussion if in case any discussion is on the stock or maybe any case study has stock name please don't act on that uh, please consult your financial advisor before acting and this this won't be any sort of buy sell recommendation from our side the idea of this session is to educate you please they uh, take that as a starting point for the discussion so again uh, we we had uh, two great sessions with uh, shashank mahajan in the past and those who are uh, yet to have a look at those session they can surely revisit i will pin those uh, over the spaces and in the meantime i request uh, shashank uh, to give a opening note uh, how he feels the 2023 landscape uh, appears to be and how how we can position ourselves so as to be uh, in a good position as far as making returns are concerned yeah thanks friends uh, for hosting again uh, so good evening everyone uh, so my understanding about the markets is like uh, definitely global scenario is not that good you all know that we are like uh, globally going through the difficult patch of uh, recession and then initially the inflation and all so but uh, i think the india is at a sweet spot and uh, i see the market based on basically what i am holding in my own portfolio uh, that is that is the key because wherever the earnings will come i think there those uh, businesses will will have a good time uh, but wherever there will be a decline in earnings and the profitability there can be a tough time so i think we should we should spend maximum time in uh, research based on what we are holding or at least what we are tracking rather than what's happening uh, globally so that would be my take i think uh, for the selected stocks which have the tailwinds uh, in india uh, which have the decent business model and uh, good balance sheet they will uh, remain and they will actually perform well that is that is what my expectation is uh, i don't know what's going to ha- happen in a mid term on this macros because that is that i generally don't track uh, much because that is not in anyone's control so it's better to track the individual stocks do our research do uh, do scuttle but whatever we can and then uh, then uh, then create a portfolio and uh, stay invested uh, uh, with it and uh, then then we can churn uh, as and when it is required based on the external situation or if our own thesis goes wrong so that can be done at any point of time but i think uh, india is in a good spot and we should we should uh, stick to the businesses which are i think based out of here yeah great great so so today's session is more on q and a from the attendees so we already have one uh, attendee who has question so sunny you can quickly unmute and ask your question please make sure it should not be stock specific right hi everyone good evening and happy new year to both of you same to you sunny uh, yeah my yeah happy new i year. have two question right. what are the sectors or theme you are bullish on 2023 and what are you know, how do you differentiate between a specialty chemical and basic or commodity chemicals uh yeah thanks uh, sunny for the question um uh, so uh, let me come to a second question first uh, the differentiation between the specialty and uh, commodity chemicals so uh, so guys if you are not joined my youtube channel you you can you can join it i have i have explained it uh, in very much detail uh, i have created plenty of videos on specialty chemical stock sector pharma uh, sector like there is a series and all so you can you can have a look whenever you have time so coming back to your question is commodity chemical is basically they don't have any pricing power so they uh, they are just like uh, any commodity like a steel or uh steel or cement uh, where there are lot of uh, lot of supply lot of competition and that's why those companies cannot dictate uh, the pricing uh, so that is nothing but a commodity i can give certain examples like uh, sulfur is a commodity chemical phenol is a com- commodity chemical 
and so on and so forth while on a specialty side uh, the definitely the the volume is low supply is low there is a specific application for that chemical generally on a performance side to improve the performance on end, end application uh, those chemicals are used and uh, and and the uh, the manufacturer are also very limited in that space so for example uh, chemicals which are manufactured by say tatva chintan or say neogen chemicals or clean sciences so these are the specialty chemicals uh, or it might be a specialty process in case of say clean sciences chemical might be similar but process might be different so generally i think performance chemicals or a specialty chemicals is that uh, type of chemical where uh, the competition is limited the realizations are much much better uh, compared to commodity so for example commodity chemicals might be trading at uh, say 1 kg at for example 1 or 2 dollars while specialty chemicals uh, can trade at 30 50 maybe more than 100 dollars also for a kg so couple of weeks weeks back i was uh, discussing with one of uh, one of my friend who actually is into uh, chemical he he owns his own chemical plant so he was saying there is a company which uh, for which per kg price of a uh, of a chem- that particular chemical is so high that they are actually ready to airlift that uh, because client uh, is in dire need of that particular chemical so that has to be specialty that is not the commodity so that is a basic difference between it and uh, then you had asked me about like what are the sectors uh, for 23 so i think like this chemical story is uh, is there for a long time uh, at least at least for next uh, uh, more than 5 years uh, the problem is the valuation so valuations uh, as as most of the investors understood that there is china plus one and then now euro plus one and all these things like uh, uh, investor didn't left any any kind of uh, uh, what you can say the space for the better valuation so most of the stocks are which are actually good in the, in this space uh, business wise they are they are uh, they are actually trading at a good valuation so so story is there we have to pick and choose what uh, what is available at good valuation and actually it it uh, it is a specialty chemical you can you can create a wealth by buying a commodity also but we have to have to know the cycle uh, if you go wrong in a cycle uh, because these are generally a cyclical plays uh, most mostly on a commodity side then it uh, it can be uh, a risk uh, Uh, so so chemicals definitely i am bullish on but uh, by my exposure and the percentage allocation has changed because of the valuation if if uh, i get the right uh, stocks which i like uh, at a good valuation definitely i am interested but i am not ready to pay five times 10 times price to sales uh, in that league if i get anything uh, at about 1 1 one, one and a half times price to sale i am happy recently i have uh, uh, taken one uh, uh, kind of agrochemical specialty agrochemical play uh, which was which is right now also available at about 1 1.1 times and about 20 22 times price to earning so so we have to be i think very picky so that is uh, the one second is pharma so so pharma actually there are uh, multiple plays we can have uh, as pharma space is divided into different blocks starting from us generics uh, branded generics which are in india then uh, you have uh, cdmo plays which are contract uh, manufacturers contract developers and manufacturers and uh, uh, then biologics is another fourth vertical so out of that uh, i am not much interested into us generic play be- because it is very commodity again a play and uh, again there are the cycles so there is a cycle based on ibup ibuprofen and uh, uh, paracetamol and also that i generally don't look much uh, uh, so i'm more interested into branded play which is based out of india uh, because they command a premium they command a price they have the pricing power and uh, uh, only issue with indian play is that uh, the growth up to certain extent might be a decent growth but once they reach that threshold they cannot keep growing 
good example is eris eris life sciences because they have reached to that extent out of, after that it is quite difficult for them to grow so we have to we have to choose the smaller company which are at the inflection point where they have the presence of brand and uh, and in they can uh, due to the brand presence and uh, pricing power they can grow uh, due to the smaller base and once that is that is exploited i think uh, i mean i am not interested after that point so but that also can be a decent growth which we can have and then the last and best one is the cdm opportunity where where the opportunity itself is very big because of uh, because of innovators are looking you know, towards india and tying up with the different companies so here also there are different nomenclatures the companies sometimes misguide the investors between everyone started saying uh, that we are also cdm play and also real cdmo guys are actually uh, those who who help the innovators or who tie up with the innovators you know, for manufacturing the novel or new molecules not the generic ones so for example so in pharma is the true cdmo uh, play uh, same same about the syngin syngin is right now mostly on a cro side but uh, uh, after their mangalore plant it will be a completely cramps player so so that is another play again uh, cautionary note that valuations are not cheap um, uh, so we have to we have to like pick the right candidate at right valuation so that is the second theme which uh, i definitely look for there are a couple of uh, one or more themes i would like to talk about so currently uh, me and my investors along with uh, my micro cap club members are invested into uh, asset light hospitality play so i think it is a bit of a unique play again uh, if you if you purely check the hotel as a industry it is a bit of a cyclical or depends on a supply and demand if in a, at a particular location if the supply is higher the prices will go down this is a bit uh, different play which we are playing uh, over there so so the competition is definitely very limited and that's why they have the pricing power location advantage and everything they have so this is i may not be bullish on the hotel industry but i am specifically bullish on a single player uh, again it's a india indian based opportunity all the sites are in india and i think after this uh, covid and all there is a revenge travel so they were definitely they are all getting benefited and i think it is a story at least for next 2 uh, to 3 years and then i will take a call what to do later uh, uh, if the volumes are uh, not there i mean the revenue stagnates and all but i i have a good uh, visibility at least for 2 to 3 years one more play we are having uh, actually it's a sub part of a pharma only so it's not a direct pharma they are into ayurvedic products where they have created actually a brand so so over the period of time i have shortlisted some of my uh, criteria as what what actually i look for so i look for a brand i look for a at a balance sheet level uh, minimal debt or debt free i look for cash flows because profits for me doesn't matter much i need the cash flows then i look for a asset light play uh, so so this is similar type of play where they have the multiple franchisee and and uh, that's why they don't have to invest or do a large amount of capex uh, so these are the things i generally uh, look for and then the most important criteria is your growth if the stock have everything or the business have everything cash flow uh, asset light balance sheet a uh, great roc but if it doesn't have growth market won't re-rate it the examples are uh, vst industries or swaraj engines so if you check they have the great balance sheet uh, uh, vst have great pricing power uh, but there is hardly any growth same about the swaraj engine roc is probably 30 more than 30 30% but the stock doesn't move because there is there is no growth so growth is a very important element and uh, in this case or at least i generally look for where 25% plus growth is available and then last and uh, not the least is the operating leverage if you can find out the the business with the operating leverage at early cycle i think it it gives a immense uh, uh, you can create a immense wealth so for example a, 
a business which is say available at 1 to 1.5 times uh, price to sales and say 15 20 times price to earning and uh, say the ebitda margin is around 10% uh, and it is expected that of the the other guys in a sector are are making much higher margins so this guy have a lesser ebitda margin because of certain upfront cost it might be uh, it might be like uh, ramping up cost because capacity utilization is not fully uh, capacity is not fully utilized so there can be different reasons uh, but if that that margin actually goes from 10% ebitda margin to 15 or 20% then if your uh, earnings double uh, sorry your revenue doubles then profitability can be more than more than double it can be three or four times so that actually use the re-rating to the stock so i also look for this uh, parameter generally while while investing so so these are the generally uh, some sectors i am tracking many others real estate also i am tracking and uh, invested also but these are the like uh, few sectors i will i will keep talking to them as and when there will be uh, questions i hope uh, i answered your question sunny thank you uh, one more question can i ask yeah yeah sure uh, so currently in financial year 23 pharma sector has seen degrowth or price erosion Uh, what are you the view on future outlook right so see pharma most of the issues uh, are there where there is a commodity element or there is a inventory stockings uh, or there is certain supply chain disruptions when where the raw materials are not available adequately because of the dependency on the china uh, so i think it's a it's a good time for the selected players no, i i may not uh, uh, call it's the best time for all the whatever like what was happening during the pandemic that every pharma stock was going down that is not the case uh, probably today and that is that was not never never the case so so if you uh, if you look for the right candidates just as i mentioned who have a pricing power or who are like uh, probably at bottom of their cycle then there will be a reversal then then it is your choice how you want to play this theme but pharma the demand ever go uh, away because everyone will need the medicines the problem is the supply so you have to track the supply more closely compared to compared to demand and that's why uh, if you if you are tracking any company which is into particularly some niche molecule and uh, there is a difficult uh, uh, like it, it, there is probably a difficulty to Uh, other manufacturers to penetrate in that side then that niche might stay for a longer time but it is it is if you ask me honestly it is difficult in pharma to to have a niche play except cdmo or crams play because uh, you uh, you take a company like natco pharma um, so they had that niche but uh, there is a disruption over the period of time because others are also doing the r and d and all so i feel the best play in the pharma is is either a branded play indian branded play because because competition doesn't come very early because creation of brand cre- creation of a brand is not very easy it, it cannot happen in one or two years and then second is safest play is the cdm until and unless innovator is uh, growing and uh, spending his uh, uh, time and effort uh, on innovating that molecule his supplier or his manufacturer is well taken care of so i think uh, that would be my answer to to pharma right mm-hmm. so before uh, coming to other speakers uh, i have one question in between the china plus one you just talked about uh, uh, shashank so how much you think the opportunity size is and if i were to ask on a scale of say 1 to 10 so where we have reached so far if you have numbers or maybe any any interpretation of that thing um uh, so see china plus 1 is a long term uh, play which probably in chemical started in 2015 in pharma api side it is it is not even started right now we are the, you tell me like i don't know any other a big pharma company into api apart from say dvs or loras there is hardly anything you not even the loras dvs is only probably in the one so this theme is they, they are definitely opportunities there 
in chemical side we are hardly manufacturing 4 to 5% of the global or the market share is about 4 to 5% for india uh, compared to china have about 40 to 45% so if china declines uh, to 3% uh, uh, and come to say lower uh, lower 30s then it can uh, i mean indian farm indian chemical industry can double so 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 uh, if you are asking me on a 1 to 10 scale maybe we are at like uh, at 2 or 3 at the max because the story is much longer pro, pro and uh, i'm i'm uh, like uh, i'm very sure that everyone won't make money out of it i mean the uh, every chemical or every pharma company won't make money out of it the guys who have the massive scale who are uh, who are competing into it because uh, to compete with china you will need a scale uh, like i was tracking uh, uh, like uh, some capacities in china <clears throat> so in, uh, so there was a product uh, which was actually import substituted in, in india and uh, someone put a capacity for that chemical uh around 30 35000 metric ton uh for the first time while the while the, uh, the capacity in china is is 1 lakh 2 lakh 3 lakh this is the kind of capacity they have so definitely it is not going to be a easy play but if you check the government has also understood and they are helping with the pli scheme and various other anti dumping and all and most importantly in chemical side uh, the balance sheets are very good uh right now the the amount of profits which they have generated in last 2 uh, 3 years uh most of the the companies uh, are like deleverage or they have reduced the debt significantly i am talking in specifically chemical side because chemical and pharma are two different worlds i think because you cannot compare both the industry uh, i i think chemical is much better play compared to compared to pharma because pharma is a very complex uh, play and uh, there is a there is a high possibility of uh, making a loss uh, over there while chemical i feel uh, definitely it's not very easy but still uh, uh, the opportunity is good and uh, can be uh, can have a good possibility of creating a wealth so so i think prince that is the answer that uh, the opportunity size is very huge but uh, i think like all the companies won't make money selected few will will make it and they will make a large pool of uh, profits that's what i think all right before coming to me uh, another quick question so so shashank do we have some uh, uh, proxy plays to say the chemical and pharma space uh, which can be uh, worth studying or me without naming if you want to discuss yeah yeah sure uh, i can uh, i can definitely so one play which i am looking for is uh, is uh, is process equipments so 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 process equipment means the the players like uh, who are into glass lining equipment manufacturing uh, or who are into uh, say nfd or a uh, uh, or these type of uh, things rbpd and all so these are the equipments which are needed for the uh, are needed into the plants of the chemicals and pharma companies so f- to give an example uh, i mean i am not interested due to the valuations in these stocks so gmm fodler and hle glass code so whole world is tracking these stocks and they have created significant wealth that i think uh, the stock got re-rated to crazy valuation so so i don't know how much wealth will get created at after this point of time so i'm not interested into them i'm talking in in terms of theme so there are some smaller players so last week actually i had a planned visit uh, of a 200 crores company maybe less than 200 crores company hardly 100 crores uh, revenues uh, so they are also into the process equipment uh, manufacturing manufacturing anfds and they have the very good clients like uh, uh like srf uh, deepak nitrate uh, gujarat floro uh, they probably got a good order from the ipca uh, and and they are they don't have the space to uh, space to manufacture i was i was there in a the factory and there there is hardly any space uh, uh to like between two bays or two or different uh, units so so they are also definitely looking for a capex and all so this is a this is one play we can have where the uh, whatever are the the equipments which are needed for the pharma or chemical uh, 
companies someone manufactures it and we can we can look for that type of play another play which i am looking uh, in a same space is uh, uh, say for example uh, uh, like i let me take a name because i won't able to explain uh, sigaji industries so so it is not into uh, not it is not into say manufacturing of capsules or uh tablets or any chemical but uh, but they are they are supporting or they are manufacturing mcc and those uh, type of things uh, i am not invested yet because of the valuation but i am definitely looking and my doing doing my homework so these can be de- there can be different types of plays i think in pharma and chemical whichever you understand well and uh, more than understanding where the valuations are decent that one should play and uh, and uh, it uh, it should have some longevity uh, it should not like because right now what i'm seeing that cycles also became very short because of i don't know what is the reason there is there is a lot of awareness in the market so so market always knows much better than the individual person so you have to have a, your niche your circle of competence and the valuation comfort uh, to bet on these stories and then stay invested for at least couple of years uh, two three years and then then if things are in your favor you can definitely uh, like stay invested for a longer time so these two examples i can give i have some more but uh, like we can discuss in uh, some other time we can we can have some other questions but these two i i think can be good place great great so me just, just you... one line prince uh, so uh, in in like in these uh, things also you should look for the competition competitive structure that is very important and while i like these plays more compared to pharma plays pure play pharma manufacturing company because there is a huge competition into a pharma uh, any any particular drug manufacturing while if you check uh, like say for example mcc manufacturer so so there are like probably four or five manufacturers in india so so that uh, story is much better compared to uh, the pharma story Uh, pharma definitely the demand wise it it will keep going but uh, but supply is uh, not in anyone's hand so the pricing gets disrupted and all and if you wanted to like uh, connect the dots you can always check the margins of these companies so so sigaji industries is having a very good margins i think 20% uh, around uh, they are maintaining and despite this bad time for the pharma industry their margins margins are better or i mean uh, at least maintained uh so uh, same about the uh, uh, process equipment so l- little bit metal prices play a role but uh, they are uh, they are not having a bad margins like a beta of uh, 17 18% is is a decent margin i, I feel so uh, so we can have these type of plays in glass lining if you check i don't know there is uh, any third player apart from the gmm and uh, hle at that scale uh, some little bit smaller players there might be but at that scale there is no other player again i wanted to clarify i am not owning those stocks i am just uh, uh, just giving it as a reference where there is a competition and where there is not because valuation plays a, the most important play while investing uh, the the business might be exceptionally well but if you pay the higher price then it becomes difficult yeah, exactly great so meet uh, you can quickly unmute and ask your question yeah thank you very much for the opportunity so sir i uh, as a long term investor we generally you know want to ride a mega trend or uh, want to play a cycle okay so my particular question was uh, what are those uh, macro economic things macro economic data that we should have a track on you know to identify these things earlier or you know get a better sense of these things so me i mean i am uh, i'm very bad into microeconomics so i never learned the microeconomics and uh, so i cannot comment much about it and i don't know ki- that like anyone can predict the microeconomics so 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 if you check the history about the fed itself so before a year they were saying there won't be inflation and then you see what has happened after that so correct so one should be aware about the microeconomics but it is very difficult to predict what's going to happen in future so uh, 
and then we we have to play those kind of uh, stories where there will be less effect for example uh, now we know that interest rates are higher and probably like they will be uh, they will keep going higher maybe the intensity would be low but at least like for a one year i am not expecting anything drastically like they will go back to wherever they were so we can at least avoid the over leverage stories and then there is a bad balance sheet so these are precautions i take uh, uh, while uh, like uh, keeping my my creating my portfolio but but direction it is very difficult uh, for me to take a call which direction it is it is going and anyways my uh, my bet is on a company so uh, so if uh, if their profitability is getting affected uh, due to this microeconomics for a medium term then i would be concerned but uh, if it is not then then i'm okay like for example i will i won't take a name of a stock so it has a debt so debt to equity of it is into a real estate play so debt to equity for them is i think about 1.1 um, times so it might be a bit higher um uh, if you take like this current scenario and all but uh, th- but and and yearly their debt would be interest interest would be about say uh, 65 70 crores but if you check uh, when the pandemic has happened uh, they have uh, there was a government concession uh, for the premiums so they saved 400 crores into that uh, sorry 200 crores into that so uh, so total premium was generally 400 they got a 50% discount which government has offered so they already saved 200 so so i don't think this interest rates will remain for next 3 years so so in, even if they it remains this guy is is not losing anything so 8 3s are you took like uh, 240 crores so already they have saved 200 crores so i generally look the things in this way wherever there is a comfort uh i mean in terms of profitability or in terms of uh, this thing where uh, uh, macro is bad for actually this this thing but the demand is good i don't know how long it will be there but uh, but uh, i think they already got the benefits uh, historically so uh, quarter to quarter the results will come and then the re-rating should happen that's what i expect at least got it got it thank you very much yeah thanks thank you meet uh, now uh, kalash you can unmute and ask your question thank you for the opportunity shashank bhai how are you long time yeah i'm uh, good i'm good uh, how about you kalash i'm i'm good sir thank you uh, i have a couple of quick questions if i may uh, one is regarding the uh, proxy to the green uh, energy theme so people are gung ho about these heavy asset plays like tata power and so on but i'm conscious of the fact that we don't have to mention a particular stock but what about what do, what's your opinion about the power exchange which is a asset light b has multiple optionalities with gas and carbon exchange also coming up so i, I so that's your uh, i wanted your perspective that's one and question number two was as you know the manufacturing theme is playing out with capex across the sectors what's your view on the logistics which could be a beneficiary as uh, so i'm talking about the ocean freight logistics uh, players thank you very much yeah thanks uh, kailash for your question so first is a uh, platform for the power so yeah definitely it's a best play i think uh, one one can have uh, for a power sector because other you know all other cases it's a asset uh, heavy thing and uh, very difficult to uh like uh, create any wealth out of it if you take last uh, say 10 15 years uh, profitability and the way their balance sheet has been so it's uh, it's a very very uh, difficult world to create uh, any wealth compared to that power exchange is the best play to have uh, again uh, you have to be mindful about the valuations and all uh, so everyone knows what has happened uh, uh, like uh, about a year and 6 months back so so um uh, for a longer term i think uh, it will keep growing at what rate um, will be a question probably like 10 12% volume growth might be there uh, uh, if if there is a shift from long term power to short term power uh, i was there into iex i i picked it early uh, but but when it has crossed uh, like my valuation limits then i had uh, 
take an exit call and uh, right now no no longer interested uh, to play it because the volumes are not uh, recovered so as and when the power volumes will recover i will uh, i will go back to it and the best part of the iax is like daily you can monitor those volumes if if you know how to track it you you wait for the right opportunity Ap- apart from that gas exchange is there uh, yeah it's a, it's a good play uh but as i said like as i was mentioning earlier about the framework that uh, you have everything in uh, in in that particular opportunity it is a high entry barrier it is high roc it is asset light play it is a great cash flow generator but if there is no growth market will test test your good amount of patience you see what has happened with vst industries last 3 years um and what has happened to iex after that 900 rupees upper circuit after bonus was announced so so i i am more interested into the the all these aspects along with growth because there there i can have a, say margin of safety plus expectation of good returns that is about the first question second uh, you had asked about the logistics So, so to be honest i am not tracking this sector as of as of now so i know i may not able to guide you properly kailash thank you shashank thank you so we have pranjal with us pranjal you can quickly unmute and ask your question hi guys hi uh, thank you prince for this opportunity hi shashank uh, so shank so i had a question uh, with the relation to the chemical space uh to be more particular the valuations in the chemical space so it's a little technical question but i wanted to know what kind of multiples or like absolute multiples or relative multiples do you use to value like a generic or a commodity type chemical company or a specialty uh type company and like what would be the bands uh for those multiples so that's the first question oh okay yeah hi pranjal thanks for the question so see like commodity and uh, specialty plays uh, gets the different valuations in market and uh, like the commodity valuations you should not uh, see the pe or price to sales when they are into best of their time so so that is one thing uh, and that applies to all the commodity stocks you actually uh, value them say 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 like uh, or you have to take a entry when they are performing worst say for example ibuprofen play or or paracetamol play or say sulfur play so you cannot value these companies when they are uh, when they are like uh, performing best so i think uh, i would i would play, pay probably like uh, 15 times price to earning or maybe lesser than that for commodity and uh, and like probably one times price to sales or less than that uh, first of all i am not much interested into this commodity plays because these cycles are very short uh, and and it is not very easy to uh, guess this cycle what would be the bottom and top so i stay away from the commodity play uh, had done some mistakes uh, earlier and then then after that never touched uh, it again uh about the specialty again like market is uh, is very crazy uh, right now it is it is offering what more than 10 15 20 times price to sales uh, i don't know like at what pace this company is going to grow definitely the business looks good the management is good the product is niche margins are high but uh, but you know that like whenever a company is uh, is making super normal profits the the honey bees will get attracted to that so is the case which is happening actually uh, with many of the players that they had a complete niche into that particular chemistry and uh, someone else has cracked that code and that pro- profitability will keep declining uh, in future so so definitely specialty is much better than uh, commodity but it commands the valuation so actually you have to find out the specialty which is at a good valuation and it is a very tough job uh, so so that's that's what i am also trying to find it out 
uh, you will get that opportunities micro in micro or small size companies where the valuations are are okay because uh, less uh, people are tracking it but you have to have uh, your understanding about a specialty and commodity and uh, there is a thin line between it so so that is my answer sure sir so sir so, if i may just can i okay continue yeah pranjal i'll pranjal i'll come to you uh, one second please so so uh, shashank uh, just like uh, in say commodity there could be a possibility let the, the consolidation is happening in that commodity and some player is uh, i mean gaining market share so how how should we view such pockets uh, a good question and maybe a uh, difficult also so uh, so let let me take a example of deepak nitrate uh, this is not a recommendation uh, whatever i have said like i have taken many stock name uh, uh, i might be invested in some of them i might not be might not be invested in uh, others so nothing is the recommendation absolutely so if you check the deepak nitrate phenol acetone is absolute commodity right uh, uh, but what deepak Uh, had done and what it is doing right now is absolutely a different uh, thinking or uh, like how to how to use uh, use the economic of scale or uh, what prince is saying uh, the consolidation is ha- which is happening so so firstly it was a import substitute so they have played that cycle well definitely the covid has helped them and all and right now the balance sheet is very good you see the the pognitrate balance sheet in 2000 say 16 or 17 when they were uh, planning this huge capex so now i think the the the, uh, the first part or first half uh, of our story is about uh, phenol and acetone so uh, second half uh, for the movie is actually derivatives of it so now uh, despite having the acetone and uh, phenol uh, as a commodity play i don't think anyone will like able to enter and compete with the deepak knight right at least in india uh, because no one have that much balance sheet size to put up those cap- capacities because they have created huge capacities definitely uh, in in world there are much bigger players compared to uh, compared to deepak knight right but right now indian government is also proactive they had uh anti dumping on phenol for a long time and uh, there are many downstream derivatives of phenol and acetone which are not manufactured in india so they will be again a uh, in- import substitute so what this guy uh, has done is like it has taken a huge leverage when no one was interested into it and uh, stock was trading at uh, probably a single digit uh, p and then it executed the the thing well and uh, made a huge profits from phenol uh, then kept on adding the capacities on phenol acetone side now going into a little bit into fluorination ex- uh, experimenting uh, and then uh, building other capacities on the downstream so so this is the best uh, play i think uh, uh, like a company can 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 uh, rightly allocate their capital uh, so so when the profitability or the outcome of that uh, upcoming capex will playing out uh, the numbers will will show up and i don't think there will be a very very high competition into it because because no one have the backward integration for that so so that is how one can play the commodity game uh, uh, if you if you ask me friends so another one or two examples i can uh, give is if a commodity itself is turning little bit a no, like what you can say something between specialty and commodity uh, if it is happening you have to give it a good amount of time and understand the play so uh, so thallic anhydride is a chemical which is manufactured by ig and uh, tirumalai so i mean i am also com- <coughs> currently doing my research only so there is another product which comes out of it is a malic anhydride and uh, if you read the some of the con calls of ig so they were saying that uh, uh, like historically thallic and malic uh, were uh, absolute commodity and that is that has been reflected in their profitability also and the stock price also but if suppose the thallic uh, application there are more application which are found and 
and if it is turning from say absolute commodity to little bit uh, semi commodity then you can have your play so that that you have to play it out i have not invested yet doing my own research also but uh, as and when i have get that confidence then i will get definitely a very good uh, opportunity over here and uh, the the valuations are good because market is treating it as a commodity so so it is always about your perception your understanding versus market understanding and then uh, then uh, we have to play it and then we have to see what is the outcome if your understanding is better than market then definitely we get uh, rewarded uh, that is how i think we get the multipliers all right fair enough so pranjal uh, you had another question you can unmute and ask uh, yes thank you so uh, my second question is actually a sort of a follow up on on the first one uh, i wanted to know your views about the fluorination space in india um, so i've been reading about the space and recently like in the quarter there was a there was an earning surprise from all the three major companies so i just wanted to understand like given the kind of growth they may generate in the future like uh, like what kind of valuations do you think like the trading at right now is that sort of justified like barring the pharma company of course pharma related fluorine play that is all, like obviously at a premium but uh, the other two i just wanted to understand like uh, where do you see these companies from growth and valuation perspective thanks for the question so yeah fluorine is definitely a interesting play a uh, difficult uh, difficult to manufacture difficult to handle and that's why there are very limited players in india probably only three uh, of a large size uh, but that's what i think happens in a market uh, or or whenever a company starts making super normal profits uh, the investors uh, start giving them the the huge multiples so that is my my concern i mean the story will remain the sto- story will there will be a there will be a growth no doubt out about it and they they have the entry barriers also so it's not like anyone will come and disrupt their own ground in a couple of years other players are slowly slowly entering if you if you observe keenly uh, it will take time probably maybe like more than 5 6 years it will take to have something like uh display but uh, i don't see the valuation comfort i mean to be honest i mean it depends on individual investment uh, style also what kind of returns are you expecting uh, from your investments uh, uh, if you are happy with the decent returns then i think still a couple of plays might be there uh, but uh, uh, i mean srf still it is a, at a decent valuation so is a gujarat navin is trading at another league uh, the numbers will come the profits will come but i mean i don't have the justification and the conviction to buy uh, navin at this uh, price i don't know what price it is trading last time i i checked it about 4000 4100 something uh, so so my investment uh, uh, philosophy is bit different i look for the the undervalued plays and uh, wait for the valuation to get re-rated uh, provided that uh, the growth comes and uh, all other criteria keep keep same so in this case the multiple is already re-rated and if there is a some earning decline due to whatever reason there is a blast uh, if i don't know if you uh, if you know that uh, there has has been a Uh, like uh, the blast in these plays so because fluorine is very reactive material so so problem of this industry is that chemical industry i have seen in many plays that uh, these guys don't report also to the exchange so i have seen many many examples that uh, there is a blast huge blast there are like the people also who has actually lost their lives and there is no report and stock is hardly moving uh, not even like down half a percent but but that definitely hurts the company and all so and it can be a tricky play so so i am not uh, uh, what you can say uh, able to pay these type of valuations or i am not comfortable rather so i will i will i will stay away from it i have many other uh, different uh, investing candidates but if you ask me about the the profitability and the growth in, in this industry it will 
it will have a very good time because the application of fluorine in uh, pharma side it is increasing into the pvdf uh, film and uh, always goes into electric vehicles so that can be a good play and so on and other agrochemicals and uh, 5g applications and many other things so the the things will will be good i think uh, i don't know what will happen to the stock price so uh, prince if if you may can i ask a small little question please one more question if possible yeah go ahead so uh, i've been actually also studying the real uh, estate and the majorly the epc uh, companies like the small uh, regional epc companies and like i see good good order book uh, building up like the growth is there so i just wanted to understand about this space like what are your views on this space uh yeah so a uh, same similar answer in a different way what you asked for the gujarat floro so order book is there huge orders are there no doubt about that government is planning for the rebuilding the whole country and you you know what's happening to the road infra and then uh, rail infra and different types of infra we are like i mean it is uh, it is the best uh, what you can say the time we will have in next 5 uh, to 10 years as as citizens uh, transform seeing the transformation in india what's happening coming to the opportunity to invest uh, see we have to see again a cash flows and, and that's why what i understand rather than profitability because uh, it can be tricky uh, valuations definitely are very good uh, for most of the infra companies uh, again pranjal i would uh, i would uh, what you can say i would bet on the proxy already have invested at very early uh for example uh, the play like action construction equipment i had invested it during pandemic uh, right now the valuations are little bit over little bit over or overvalued or maybe not uh, at fair valuations but the uh, story is there uh, so working capital management was good uh, ma- the company has done a good amount of buybacks at 60 70 rupees so this play i like rather than directly going on betting uh, the road construction company because because uh, i don't want to name uh, the companies but uh, but it can be very tricky uh, if government is not giving you the the, the funding properly the uh, means that things are sorting out uh, no doubt about it this government is doing a much better work compared to the previous ones but but we never know what can happen and all so uh, i think proxies are always safer compared to direct infra infra play uh, where the client is government uh, b2g uh, there is some kind of companies uh, where they have some dependency on the private players so i think that is better uh, way to play because uh, these guys play you pay you on time and uh, uh, and collections uh, there there is uh, less issue on a collection so so either go on that side or or play with some proxies um thank you thank you shashank that was really insightful thank you prince yeah thanks thank you pranjal for your questions so before coming to gs sharma i have another question uh, shashank so uh, say if we hypothetically assume uh, we get a period like 2018 to 2020 as uh, as it was for small caps uh, during that the period so what would be your strategy so as to go about small cap investing in that case so first strategy is get out of it <laughs> book whatever you can and stay and wait because see 2018 situation was a very different situation compared to what we have right now the the index uh, the the individual stocks they were trading at crazy valuations not price definitely the price was definitely high but the valuations were crazy like it was it were trading at 50 60 100 time multiples probably what is happening right now in a chemical side more of a specialty chemicals uh, something much bigger was happening on a on a more or less m- most of the small and uh, these type of stocks so so right now i don't think that uh, scenario is happening on a broader level there might be stock specific scenario uh i think kailash was uh, like asking me about this uh, renewable energy so some of the pockets i see that that thing is happening like 
in a real uh, in a renewable sector i see the par like 100 200 i don't know like what uh, gold they going to print uh, uh, by staying in that sector so so i will definitely avoid that thing but on an average uh, uh, valuations are not uh, that much stretched what what was in 2018 uh, if you ask me on you know, overall level so so we have to be prepared that why 2018 has happened there were multiple uh, reasons for that uh, first was a valuation second was uh, uh, the uh, the long term equity uh, taxes uh, what government has uh, amended then uh, the mutual fund uh, 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 the allocation for the the large cap and small caps and then ilnfs and then the final one was the the covid and covid was the bottom for that small cap cycle downtrend which started in probably february or march 2018 so so it it if it can happen it 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 can happen at any point of time but uh, it needs i think a multiple things uh, for that long cycle and valuation is the is is the very key thing for that so if uh, small cap index goes to 60 and uh, 100 p then then i will uh, book everything and i will wait that is uh, what i will i will recommend uh, or uh, that is what is my view because those are the extremely crazy valuations i i got out of iex at 100 p i got out of you know, tata lexi at uh, similar uh, p and then then the tata lexi again moved up a bit uh, and then right now it is it is below my selling price same about the cdsl Uh, i i sold it at uh, 1500 so uh, so valuation is very important like if you if you don't uh, like uh, understand or don't exit at the right uh, time then then like 2 uh, 3 years are gone without any re- any returns probably you know what has happened to wipro the high which has it has made uh, in probably 2000s it has uh, broken recently and again like the stock is 50% down from the recent high so so you have to be very very careful about the the valuations all right right we have advait aroda sir with us so sir over to you still on mute yeah yeah hi thanks thanks uh, yeah hi shashank uh, beautiful insights on um, on various stocks and industries uh, the way you have explained a few uh, stock ideas i would say industry updates uh, gives us you know Uh, a lot of uh, detail uh, details on way to look on for opportunities ashashank i was just going through a tweet a couple of days back jahan pe apne uh, you mentioned about uh, uh, re-rating candidates where you know the <clears throat> the earnings growth is picking up and valuations are still on the lower side do you do you feel ashashank there are specific uh, sectors or sub sectors jahan pe ye growth earnings ki speed pick up hone wali hai and still the valuations are not too high uh yeah thanks sir for your uh, uh, question so sectors i am not sure about there are the sectors and i means my philosophy is not sectoral specific philosophy because in particular sector there might be a candidate who is trading at 50p there might be a candidate who is trading at say 10p because of various reasons so so my approach is always a stock specific uh, approach uh, i will study the company first then competition and then the the sector so i feel there are there are certain opportunities where the valuations are uh, not not very very extremely undervalued but probably a fair valuation and uh, instead of looking at a pe as a stand alone matrix peg is a better matrix so if you have any view on a growth side and if you get can get something around one time or 1.5 times i think it's a decent uh, valuation uh, if that growth actually comes problem is that uh, that that growth never comes uh, if even if we buy something at one or 1.5 times so so understanding of that growth and that profitability is more much more important rather than if you buy it at one times or 1.5 times if you buy it at 1.5 times stock comes to one time it is okay but if that growth doesn't come then like it will be very 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 difficult situation but i think there are a good opportunities not very very much about many opportunities but 
but there are uh, certain opportunities stock specific uh, where where that uh, earning rating i mean uh, p rating uh, or valuation rating can happen and i think it always happens with the growth you check the case of the hle glass coat uh, in 2016 uh, uh, 17 when they uh, uh, acquired that uh, uh, swiss glass coat uh, glass coat so and then the earning started and then this uh, pharma chemical story also started so so stock has gone from what p multiple to what p it is trading right now despite having the good correction uh, from the top so so if you have a clear view on our earnings then uh, then it's a good story agree agree uh, just a quick one if i can add here sashank uh, uh, as you were mentioning that you know some stocks uh, their valuations are too high uh, haven't you seen sashank that over the last many years stocks like the likes of pd light ya yeah, asian paints ya yeah, in fact astral to a certain extent uh these stocks have remained in a very high pe range uh, between 40 and 80 let's say nestle bhi usme aa gaya you know so don't you think ki kuch aise stocks hain jo hamesha se high pe command karte hain they would i don't think asian paints at or pedilite under 40 humko kabhi milega shayad unless until there's a catastrophe somewhere but don't you think that there are certain stocks jo low pe mein hum pakad hi nahi payenge wo hamesha 50 60 70 pe hi humko milenge so yeah thanks for the question firstly so you have to also understand what type of uh, wealth it has created in last 5 years when asian paints was available at say 50 p or 40 p and right now where it is available i think last time when i bought of asian paints was in 2015 when the nifty has fallen from 9300 to 6800 and asian paint i think uh, corrected up very nicely during that fall but after that it never came uh, like to the decent valuation so uh, so it is individual call what type of returns are we looking for um, but uh, the the amount of returns which asian paints has uh, generated when it got rated re-rated from say 2025 pe to 50 pe was definitely much higher compared to uh, if you are starting multiple is say 40 or 45 uh, same about the pd light is much at uh, higher uh, valuation so it is yeah. individual's decision what returns he is comfortable with are you if you are comfortable with 12 15 18% returns go ahead those stocks might have a chance to to give you but if you are looking for super normal returns then i don't think these are the stocks uh, which are the right candidates i mean stocks are i mean business are definitely the best businesses but uh, 50p and 60p and 90p i'm i'm not at all comfortable because i don't think like they will go to the 1000 pes and then i will sell so so i will better buy at 15 p and wait for the p to get re-rated at 30 or 40 and maybe like some luck happens iex i bought probably at 25 p and i had sold at uh, 100 102 p so sometimes luck gives you gives you some extra returns but not always so to say thanks thanks sachin appreciate that and i think these uh, yeah. stories are more of a means market looks them as a longevity play asian paints market is giving such a multiple because of longevity uh, because of their distribution uh, same about the pd light it's kind of a monopoly uh, same about uh, many other stories like hul and nestle so longevity also plays a lot of uh, lot of factor you know i think a valuation yeah they, i think the market considers them as as a compounder of, as you said na 15 18% compounding story i think there are 8 10 such stocks uh, in nifty, mainly in nifty 50 and nifty next 50 these 8 10 high pedigree stocks are continuously giving 15 17 18% uh, growth so yeah you are absolutely right that they won't be like you know super multi baggers six eight times but yeah they would double in four five years yeah excellent thanks thanks ashank and we uh, now right now we are at a very good uh, juncture when the competition started coming into a paint industry and uh, not a smaller competition there like uh, people are doing talking about big numbers so what happens to patient paints after 4 5 years will be a uh, good uh, case study one should one should have will mm-hmm. that uh, trade at uh, 50 or whatever multiple it is trading if other guy or other competitor penetrates deeply definitely that is also not easy thing for anyone else to penetrate because distribution channel is 
very difficult to have but they have their pockets you know, good amount of deep deep pockets so so let's see but i am not comfortable betting on asian pens at this price in valuation right right thanks sushank thanks abhijit sir so so sushank uh, like uh, if i were to ask uh, which open i mean see uh, how easy or difficult is to have an information edge over others especially in small caps yeah it is very very difficult uh, prince uh, because first of all these companies don't uh, disclose anything so so like there was a person who was asking me on a twitter i don't know what is what was his name so his question was ki aap kya karte ho plant visit ja ke kuch samajhta to nahi hai i i i completely agree with kuch nahi samajhta hai mujhe nahi pata ki wo boiler mein kya hai aur wo uska thickness kya hai and uska technical details kya hai i am not going to go there to watch the boiler and reactor and uh, different things but i generally do the plant visit to understand the management and when you do uh, meet 2025 managements physically you understand a little bit at least what is the body language body language of that person how uh, interested he is in doing his business and then uh, then i don't only meet that guy i will meet all the other competitors or if the meeting is not possible i will try to uh, get it from some other sources who knows him or who's uh, having a good understanding about that sector and i'll meet different people uh so that is how your conviction builds it, it is not like to to check the equipment or the manufacturing process or xyz it is about uh, about how he treats his employee you you go and talk to the shop floor guys uh, who is actually the laborers and uh, doing uh, the hard work for the company uh, and ask them how your boss treats you do do you get your payments uh, every month or do, does he delay your payments or nahi deta ya whatever might be the issues so so this actually gives you a lot of uh, confidence and and plus the the understanding what those guys have we as investors don't have 10% of the understanding on a sector level despite doing the full time research and uh, being in this field uh, for a decent amount of time so that is also gives you not specific to that stock but industry it gives you a lot of uh, insight so that is a reason for uh, these uh, these plant visits to understand more about the industry more about the management and little bit about the product that what i would i would say yeah prince yeah. you i forgot your questions can can you please please repeat yeah, this was the question. so so if i were to put like this uh, so what homework you do before uh, going for a scuttle but with the management so as to get maximum uh, information out of them yeah so see like uh, if if you to, tomorrow go and uh, walk in a plant it will be very difficult for you to understand uh, uh, anything if uh, the homework is not done for anyone for me also if i randomly go to any any uh, plant which uh, which in that industry i have never talk, or like tracked so i uh, i generally do the visits uh, where i i am already tracking that industry or that company firstly it's like it is a end kind of a uh product or you can say i do that plant visit at the end when my all the research has, is done and then uh i need i have certain questions for which i am not getting the answers from the available data and all so 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 if anyone is interested into this thing firstly you should uh, cover whatever is the information which is available publicly so you go through all the annual reports you go through all the con call transcripts for them not only for the 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 business or the stock which you are interested you should go and check like the what their competitors are doing and and so on and so forth then you will get a good understanding about the company and then you will have your questions and then that you can get resolved by by meeting the guys over there so so things becomes much easier once you are ready with the homework and uh, you know what to ask to a management and uh, and uh, i'm very sure these managements always talks very good things about their company no doubt about it but you get a feeling about like uh, how they talk and like you you understand the body language that's what i will able i will say that and that that is not going to happen when you'll meet the first management it will happen probably when you'll meet the 10th or 15th management that uh, you'll understand are isne to mujhe uh, kuch like he has said the wrong things to me he, it was not true and uh, this this you will come to know when you will meet his competitor probably 
so so it is a nice uh, i think uh, work i like uh, meeting uh, different people and uh, and then you have to be silent and just keep listening what they are saying i am not going to bet go tomorrow and bet on that uh, candidate uh, i will see the numbers if what he is talking is he delivering or not and on all those things so uh, there is one question uh, that is uh, partly a stock specific so i ask the second half of it so basically some capex uh, the capacity after capex is going live and earnings visibility are i mean in normally uh, that is not uh, what we say wo sabko pata lag gaya ki abhi earning aane wala hai so the question is more like ki when to place ourselves in such cases when we know ki capex abhi live hone wala hai aur earnings aane wali hai yeah yeah thanks uh, for that question so yeah it is again not very easy uh, i will i will give you uh, uh, another example uh, i don't want to take a name of that stock but uh, but you have to see to that if the product what they are manufacturing or for which they are doing the capacity expansion is it their existing product with their current portfolio or, or it is a new product if it is existing product you can start and bet uh, before the capex when the valuations are low and then the market is waiting and earnings are not come and all because i am certain that uh, or uh, these if these guys are already into that uh, field from last 20 30 40 years wo capacity expansion hoke uh, wo ramp up ko time nahi lagega but if they are they are developing some complex product which for which they don't have any experience and probably doing it for first time then uh, then i think it is uh, like uh, you have to go actually on the ground if you have the access and uh, meet to the technical people and uh, check ki ye technology kahan se aaya hai and like what is the capability and if you can understand then it is okay if you don't understand then better to stay stay away and wait for the earnings to uh, like uh, it in that capex to reflect in earnings uh, that is uh, that is how i will play because i have lost uh, some of my capital by being early and then that uh, product never came and uh, that is that is what happened because it was a new product and management did have had a, a capability uh, to do it actually the management was decent but still uh, they not able to ramp up, ramp it up so so things can go bad uh, uh, like in in these cases so it's best way that if the same product if they are doing just a capacity expansion either brownfield or greenfield then most probably like i have not seen any play where um, the company is from manufacturing a, a product and doing the same capacity utilization for the a product and then they failed i have not seen it uh, any uh, anywhere but if they are manufacturing some b or other product then it, there is a possibility sarthak you can unmute and ask uh, can i ask uh, stock specific uh, questions sarthak that won't be wise to ask if you have any business related query you can ask and shashank is free to take that or he can give it up i mean don't, don't ask me where the stock price is going to go because i don't know uh, if i am tracking it uh, i will i will help you with my understanding uh, even if it is a stock specific question but uh, 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 but if i'm not then uh, sorry i am interested in business only i'm uh, not worried about uh, its stock price right now it's already very down from the top uh, i wanted to know about the business prospects of clean science okay okay so right so clean science is uh, uh, the business uh, is excellent business uh, management is also uh, very good management uh, product also is a, a good product but question was for, from the first day on valuation so i was never comfortable with the valuation of that stock and that's why i never invested and right now 16 15 1600 is going i think trading right now and i think right now also it is a exorbitant valuation uh, you 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 see what uh, price to sales it is uh, trading at i have not checked recently but uh, i i don't have any comfort uh, into it but uh, if you check if you if you ask me on a business side it's a it's a it's a one of the kind of a business uh, which the 
uh, Sikchi brothers have created uh, over the period of time their technology and all. But see, like their their margins are super normal margins. I think their EBITDA margin is about fifty percent or sixty percent, if I'm right, because of their specific that uh, vapor phased uh, te- technology. Yeah, chemistry. Their chemistry is uh, quite complex. Uh, yeah. EBITDA margins are very high, but is it sustainable? And Vinati is also entering in that segment. So yes, yes, yes you are right. So so. uh i think tbhq and mhq these lines of the products in performance chemicals they have so yeah so like um, you take a example of uh, i think that uh, cooler manufacturer company i forget symphony so what has happened to symphony from 2010 to probably 2016 17 when it has a high super high margins and uh, then when the competition came what has happened to them so same thing can happen to clean sciences also because uh, vinati is definitely coming into it uh, uh, camlin fine sciences also said they got a big through i don't know like how true it is uh, but definitely i am not going to bet on a company when it is trading at its peak uh, peak margins and peak profitability because mar- market gives it a peak valuation so it's better that you get your understanding for example hypothetically i'm just saying uh, i don't know what is the, the truth now that you know by your understanding and your re- research that camlin fine sciences actually got got through the technology which clean sciences have and uh, the the camlin multiples are at a throw away valuation so you go and bet bet on it and then then when the earnings will come market will get it re-rated rather than betting on the clean sciences and waiting for the competitor to come that is what my understanding would be now the question the real question is that if camlin fine sciences able to ramp it up or no or all this these things will be there i am just taking it as a case study uh, i don't know really if they can you know, do it and that is that is a different thing to discuss uh, what global presence they have and coming back to the india from china and also but just like i am telling you clean sciences right now i am not comfortable with the valuation despite the business is a good business which in which the competition is coming if the competition comes then these valuations will get collapsed immediately yes it may happen just like uh, india mart uh, india mart i mean uh, yeah you can say like that uh, so so ne- i was never comfortable at uh, when they have done the the fundraise i think i don't know exact price probably like 9000 or 10000 rupees they have done the fundraise and all so so it's a i mean like uh, the valuation plays a major role uh, uh, so and you cannot extrapolate everything the growth and all so if the company is having a 40 50% of the growth it might be a like for a particular period of time we cannot uh, uh, calculate our uh, valuations for five year forward p based on 50% growth it is not going to happen there might be a once or two case studies out of probably 100 or 200 where the actually that 40 50% growth uh, sustains but it is it is quite difficult so uh, so valuation is the key uh, thing one should one should understand before uh, investing uh, in any any stock um, th- thanks for my uh, answer thank you thanks satak so uh, sashank we are uh, done with the, all the participant questions and my questions which were handy and we are almost like cross 20 minutes to our scheduled time for one hour so so i i thank you again for uh, agreeing to my request and uh, sharing great insights i must say so sashank before we wrap up uh, although most of us are already aware but uh, would appreciate if you tell your our attendees about your offerings and uh, the youtube uh, channel content which is available for free right right so first of all thank you for hosting me prince i think this is uh, i think probably third time we are we are connecting uh, happy to connect uh, again whenever uh, you you would like to host me um, so guys i have a youtube channel uh, where we have about uh, 85 87000 subscribers and um, i try to create a content 
after a lot of efforts uh, we try to dig deeper into a companies and my niche is mostly into a small and micro size companies where the information is not readily available available and that is how we actually get our uh, what you can say valuations and uh, the good stock at the right valuation because generally in a small and large cap space as the information is very much available and everyone is talking about it you won't get those stocks at the good valuation business remains good but the valuation doesn't so that's why actually i started this micro cap club uh, about uh, in in uh, uh, in august uh, uh, this year where we actually uh, where i actually share my experiences when i go for a planned visit where i i have some insights about the business which are directly not available in a concord transcripts or uh, or annual report so that i share in that club we have a like the discussion uh, forum also over there i have created different reports and and uh, different what you can say uh, small small uh, uh, particular sub sections into chemistry so please if i can take one or two minutes just to explain uh, what like uh, yeah, what please, kind of we have about. all the time <laughs> <laughs> so Uh, so like uh, my core sectors are chemicals and pharma where i generally spend my most of the times other sectors also we do cover so for the members i have created like uh, in chemistry what is the acetyl chemistry what are the players into acetyl chemistry how to track it what is fluorination what is the bromination what is say phosgenation what are the players into it and then we have created like multiple probably like uh, till now maybe 20 30 different articles we have written about different stocks different uh, different supply chains uh, i mean the value chains and then we have connected everything so the users get a very or the the club member gets a very smooth experience so if you start with the say acetyl chemistry so so lakshmi organics and uh, jubland in gravia is into that chemistry fluorination you know the three names uh gujarat floro and srf and navin so so actually how to track this sector for a for a new investor or even a seasoned investor is very difficult because every stock is having a different business model um, so i have created this and then like we are we are like uh, building that uh, uh, content over the period of time right now uh, i have i have recently uh, created a good amount of articles on youtube also it's it's free you can just check it out if you have a uh, time and like to learn about different stocks probably i have created more than 200 videos which are at least a minimum 20 to 30 minutes each you will get a good insights about the different stocks it's not a recommendation service so so have uh, do do check on my youtube channel and on my website valuedicator.com and if you are interested you are welcome in our club if you are if you are looking to learn something new things uh, where the information is very scarce and we generally are invested interested into the companies uh, which are say below 1000 crores market cap because they are the the valuation comfort real valuation comfort is there so so thanks again uh, prince uh, for hosting me and uh, had a had a great time uh, interacting with you Yes, Shashank. If I got one uh, question in DM, if you would like to take before we wrap up. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. So this is basically how can we read or understand change in growth block and what is its significance? Change in growth. Basically, growth block uh, might be referring gross to block. the. Okay. Uh. so gross block is actually available if you get the balance sheet uh, so so that i don't know what is the question because gross block is just a number which you will get anyway on a uh, on a balance sheet and uh, and if any capex is happening that gross block will increase uh, if they are disposing of any assets that that will that will reduce and then if you add up the accumulated depreciation you will have the the net block so so definitely increasing uh, gross block means that the company is into process of uh, some capex they are they are planning and it might get uh, you can say uh, operational in upcoming years so you can if you want to study you can study say loras labs or the deepak knight right when they were having their uh, capexes and that is how then the later on operating leverage plays out i am not sure what was his question but i just shared uh, what 
like what does it mean and how to interpret it yeah it was related to kpex only in the, just to explain yeah thank you shashank and thank you again for your time and uh, surely we will have another session when we feel like uh, we can add value to our uh, attendees uh, sometime down the line thank you again and guys uh, keep showering your love and if you are liking our work do check out our handle so that uh, you can connect with us and uh, get access to whatever we share and we try to bring many uh, industry expert and stalwarts so as to share their information please take uh, this as a starting point do not act on the names being taken they were purely for illustrations and we are not responsible if you make any financial decision on the basis of this discussion so with this uh, i take your leave and any any two cents on my spaces uh, shashank uh yeah uh, yeah prince so yeah you are really doing the phenomenal work i mean you are you are getting all right minds uh, connected uh, together to your audience uh, i also listen uh, wherever uh, i get time or i listen the recording so so thanks for that prince like uh, you are doing a very good work and keep on doing it and uh, all the all the best uh, to you